Welcome everyone, I hope you are having a fantastic day. In this video I'm going to talk about capturing gameplay on the PlayStation 5 using the Create button on the DualSense controller. This allows anyone with a PlayStation 5 to capture and share gameplay without requiring a dedicated capture device. It can also serve as a useful backup or a second option for people who already have capture devices. This is especially useful if your capture card recording fails for any reason. But just how good is the quality of the recording and what does it look like after it is uploaded to YouTube? Is there a difference if you are recording PlayStation 4 games versus PlayStation 5 games in terms of quality? I've discovered some really interesting things so I'll cover that and more in this video. So the gameplay you're watching now is me getting a deatomizer strike on Call of Duty Infinite Warfare which is of course a PlayStation 4 title that hasn't been enhanced in any way for PS5. I wanted to play various generations of games to test the PlayStation 5's capture utility and I got this gameplay. Once the game that I was playing was done I pressed the create button on my controller and I was then able to save my gameplay. There are a number of options available. You can record from a few seconds all the way up to one hour of gameplay in varying amounts. You can press the create button twice quickly to record short clips. Also, you can start off a recording as you begin your game, so you don't need to wait until after the game is done. It all works the same regardless if you're recording PS4 or PlayStation 5 games. Once the recording is complete, you can do some simple editing on the PS5 itself and, as I record this video, there is the option to share the gameplay to YouTube or to Twitter. However, what I think is most useful is that you can copy the gameplay from your PS5 to a USB drive. Then put that same USB drive into your computer and you now have access to the gameplay on your computer for editing. This really is a great feature to have. Another bonus offered by the PlayStation 5 doing the actual gameplay capture is that game audio is recorded. If you are someone who uses a headset such as the Pulse 3D or some headphones plugged into your controller, you can't actually capture the game audio using a dedicated capture device. There may be some designs of headset out there that make this possible, but all the ones that I personally have don't. So as long as you have sufficient free space on your PlayStation 5 to record gameplay, this sounds fantastic, but something that will be very important to many people is the actual quality of the gameplay that the PlayStation 5 records. Just how does it compare to gameplay recorded with an expensive, dedicated capture card? Is there a difference between PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games? There are quite a few things to consider here when evaluating the quality. The first is the quality of the actual PS5 recording itself versus that from a dedicated capture card. The second thing to consider is the quality of both these options after they have been uploaded to YouTube, which is probably where most people will want to upload their gameplay to. So I have spent considerable time comparing gameplay from my capture device against the gameplay captured by my PlayStation 5 itself, and I did this first by viewing the original files on my computer. On my PS5 I am using a 1080p monitor and I record and upload my gameplay in 1080p, otherwise known as Full HD. On the PlayStation 5, regardless of whether or not I begin recording before I play a game or record after the game is complete, it records in 1080p and with the same quality settings. I believe people who game at 4K are able to record in 4K, which is fantastic, but I'm unable to test that, so this video is purely about my experiences with 1080p. I found some interesting differences in quality, however, on PS4 titles versus PS5 titles. When recording PS4 games, the PS5 records them at 30 frames per second and at just under 11 megabits per second, so that's 30 frames per second even with Infinite Warfare, which is a 60 frames per second game. When I record a PS5 title such as Astro's Playroom, it records at 60 frames per second and at just over 18 megabits per second, so we are seeing a reasonable jump in quality for PS5 titles. I suspect the PS5 may be using a legacy method for capturing PS4 gameplay. 
When I watch the gameplay recorded by my PS5 on my computer, it looks good. It is perfectly acceptable for both PS4 and PS5 titles. If you've never recorded gameplay in any other way, then you'll be really, really happy with it. I do notice that the PS5 gameplay looks slightly better. The higher bitrate and the fact that PS5 titles will have better graphics anyway definitely helps. 60 frames per second PS5 titles recorded at 60 frames per second will also look slightly smoother than PS4 games. I'll be showing some PS5 gameplay later in this video. Now when I compare capture directly from my PS5 to gameplay I record with my capture card, there is clearly a difference. With a dedicated device and software you have so many options and you can choose to record in much higher quality provided you have enough disk space. I typically record in high quality and at 60 frames per second, even for PS4 titles. So when I view this on my computer beside the PS5 recordings, I can definitely see the difference. My recorded gameplay looks nicer, it is sharper and it's smoother to watch, be it a PS4 or a PS5 title. So the resolution is the same, but because I can record at a higher bitrate and potentially higher frames per second, I get better results. Obviously though, you'd expect this from a device that you have to pay for versus something that comes as standard within the PS5 console and software itself. Also, there is the matter of convenience where having a dedicated capture card makes it easier and quicker to get gameplay directly onto your computer ready for editing. But it must be said that the PlayStation 5 does a fantastic job capturing gameplay. However, there is more to consider than just how the original files look unprocessed on a computer. What about after they've been uploaded to YouTube? YouTube takes your uploaded video files and processes and compresses them, which unfortunately leads to quite a reduction in quality sometimes. They don't look as good as they did before leaving your computer. So does this make any difference or close the gap between the two capture methods? Before making this video, I've done some tests and uploads and I found that, at least in my channel for which I use 1080p, YouTube compression affects my video quality enough that the quality of my gameplay from my dedicated capture device is significantly reduced when viewed on YouTube. This means that in YouTube, the difference between the two types of recordings that's my dedicated card versus the PlayStation 5 itself, is definitely not as noticeable as it is when viewing the original files directly on my computer. I was actually quite surprised how good the PlayStation 5 captured gameplay looked on YouTube after it had been processed and compressed. So in short, a dedicated capture card will definitely offer more convenience, some better quality and the potential to record at higher frames per second if you want to do so, with the main benefit here being for PlayStation 4 titles. However, once uploaded to YouTube, I feel that a lot of the improvements in visual clarity that the dedicated card offers are definitely diminished. This will be especially true if the gameplay is being watched in a small phone or a small tablet screen. Based on this, I think the PlayStation 5 gameplay capture feature will work pretty well for those wanting to record some gameplay who don't have an actual capture device. It could also prove very useful for those who do have a capture device but find a recording fails, or maybe for those who don't want to have their computer on all the time to record gameplay. You can get recording devices which don't require a computer to record, but most do require a computer to be constantly on. As I said, I've done many tests before creating this video, but this video itself will also be an interesting test for you to watch and see if you notice a big difference. The intro gameplay in this video was recorded with my capture card. The first Infinite Warfare The Atomizer Strike was recorded using the PlayStation 5 capture facility, and the second The Atomizer Strike was recorded using my dedicated capture card. As I mentioned before, the PlayStation 5 captured the first deatomizer strike at 30 frames per second, so it's not an ideal fit for this 60 frames per second video, but all my other gameplay in this video is at 60 frames per second, so that's what I went with. Finally, at the end of this video, I will have some Astro's Playroom gameplay, both from my capture card and from the PlayStation 5 utility itself, and those will both be at 60 frames per second for you to compare. 
Let me know in the comments section if you see a big difference in video quality between the various sections of this video and be sure to let me know the type of device and the screen size you are watching on. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this useful and interesting and I will see you soon for another video.